the Divine Anglican Church, Jesse's Church. A special welcome to any of you here for the first time. And I also welcome those joining us online. I thank the rector, the Venerable Alistair Singh McCollum, for permission to officiate this service. Jessie and I go back about 20 years. I think she kind of held on to me because I was willing to accept her rather eclectic spiritual journey. <laughs> I enjoyed my conversations with her and uh, we grew closer through those 20 years. So here I am. We gather here with gratitude. Gratitude on the ancestral and unceded lands of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, known as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. We come together to remember, to grieve, but also to celebrate and to give thanks to God for the gift of the life of Jessie Helen Mantle. Now, Jessie herself planned this order of service. Every detail, <laughs> except just one. Um, we will pause when it's time, uh, have a, a moment of silence when the cross is processing up to the front. Now, she did not choreograph this, but I think she would go along with it because we always do that at a service at St. John's. The music, including the prelude and the postlude, are according to her wishes. The readings, you'll notice the, uh, the psalm that's being used. I suggested some uh, Vancouver Island animals years ago when Jesse and I talked about this service and she says, I like that, she says. Nature is important to me. So that is the psalm that will be read. The prayers she, po she picked out, and then she also picked the person, Marnie, to write the prayers of the people that we'll be hearing today. Even the quotes that you wrote, read, or maybe you'll have time for later, the quotes just inside the front cover, those are picked out by Jesse as well. We are immersed in Jesse's spirituality for the next little while. What was important to her, how and where God spoke to her, what gave her strength, comfort, drive. And I believe the desire always to enable others to do their best. One of our speakers, I hope the connection works, Arthur Roy, um, is a childhood friend of Jesse's. Now he's in Nanaimo right now, um, over 93 years old, I believe. And if the connections work, we'll hear from him uh, via Zoom. If they don't, just say a prayer that, well, it didn't work, but my, what a friendship that went on for so many years. The uh, form of the Lord's Prayer that Jesse chose um, may be new to some of you. Uh, this comes from the uh, New Zealand prayer book. When it is time, we will read it together slowly, thoughtfully. Um, as we all know, Jesse was a teacher, and she is teaching us today. <laughs> After a brief pause in silence, when the crucifer will bringing up the cross, the cross symbolizing the presence with us of the resurrected Christ, then we shall begin. Would you all stand, please? Mm -hmm. 
I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We continue in prayer. God of all consolation, you are a refuge and a strength for us, a helper close at hand in times of loss. Help us so to hear the music and words of our faith that our loneliness is eased and our hope reawakened. May your Holy Spirit lift us above our natural sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together the first hymn Jesse chose that streams of living justice. may be seated. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, 
You are very great. You make springs gush forth in the alleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild elk quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitations. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart. Oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Vancouver Island that God planted. In them the birds build their nests. The eagle has its dome in the fir trees. The high mountains are for the marmots. The rocks are a refuge for the rabbits. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows its time for setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. The young cougars roar for their prey, seeking their food from God. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. People go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. Oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Thank you. Second reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the busyness that God has given to everyone to be busy with. God has made everything suitable for its time, moreover has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, 
nor can anything be taken from it. God has done this, so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is, already has been. That which is to be, already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. Thank you. Is Arthur connected with us? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, I've, I've had some just wonderful conversations with him and I look forward to his words. Is he, is he muted still, is that? Okay, well, we could go ahead with the other two sharings and then perhaps go back to Arthur um, and try again later, yeah. Um, Arthur, as I said, is about 93 years old. He is um, living in Nanaimo now. He um, participates in a a book study by Zoom. So I know he's familiar with the technology. In fact, um, he was more comfortable with it than I was a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm, I'm still very hopeful. But why don't um, we go on with uh, Jeanette? Would that be all right? Where is Je There she is. Thank you, Jeanette, for being flexible. Thank you. I've got my water here because my throat is a bit dry, so. A friend and a colleague of, of Jesse's from, for more than 30 years. I am honored today to highlight the professional contribution by Jesse over her 42 years of nursing. It's no small feat trying to do that. Jesse graduated from the Royal Jubilee Hospital School of Nursing in 1953 to begin her nursing career and her lifelong passion. She held a position at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver as a part of the staff who opened the first post-anesthetic room, now called the recovery room, in the province where she became a head nurse. She then went on to McGill University where she received her baccalaureate degree in nursing and upon graduation, she returned to St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver where she began her nursing education career. Jessie, who was driven to keep on learning, enrolled in the master's of degree program at Western University, I mean, San Francisco in 1968, following which she assumed a position as a member of the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Western Ontario, a post she held for 12 years. Here she led the graduate program in nursing taught nursing theory, as well as other courses. Students remember her ability to challenge their thinking, reinforce their highest goals. Jessie also knew how to build networks. She connected students, practitioners, researchers, professors, nurses, non-nurses, 
It was during this time she also studied gerontological nursing on a sabbatical at the University of Washington. While at university, in Western University, Jesse was awarded the OCUFA, which recognized Jesse as the most outstanding teacher in Ontario's university that year. In 1981, Jesse returned to Victoria. Roots to combine her, um, these roots were then to combine her interests of education and nursing practice by accepting an innovative joint appointment teaching at the University of Victoria and becoming a clinical nurse specialist in gerontology at the Juan de Fuca Hospital, the first in Canada in gerontology. Over the next 13 years, she taught registered nurses at UVic and was a teacher in one of the first distant nursing courses for RNs enrolled in the baccalaureate degree program offered over the BC Knowledge Network. In fact, that's how Knowledge Network really started, was through these distance courses, and of course, Jessie was there to start it. She also established courses in gerontological nursing, which she taught on campus. And a few of the, the students of, of those classes are in this audience, I think. At one of Fuga hospitals, Jessie helped establish a wide set of clinical programs and committees to improve residents' care and that's where we got to know each other really well. I was at the Juan de Fuca hospitals at the time as the director of nursing. The, inter the interdisciplinary team she led founded a clinical council, an ethics committee, a care and care programs for special ailments. The clinical nurse specialist position was so successful that it became permanent uh, one to be held in, in the UVic. In 1988, Mantle authored Nursing Practice and Long-Term Care Agencies, which was included in a Nursing Faces, Nursing Faces the Future, a book written by Baumgarten Larson. Aren't you tired already from listening all the work that she did? <laughs> I'm exhausted. Over these years, she was a very busy lady. You haven't heard it all yet. As a member of the board of the Canadian Nurses Association, then the first president of the Canadian Gerontological Nursing Association, which, by the way, she worked tirelessly at instigating it to get going. Now it exists as, as um, a permanent organization across Canada. She also shared her knowledge through teaching workshops across Canada, as well as her numerous journal and book publications. When did she sleep? Besides that, she made several presentations at conferences across Canada. After her nursing career of 42 years, Jessie retired in 1995. As you can see, Jessie was very committed to her career, and I cannot pay sufficient tribute to Jessie for all her contribution to the profession and to the many lives of older adults. She did this in her teaching, she did this in her research, and in her mentoring, and by opening doors for others to learn. Her approach was always to include the multidisciplinary team members. A wonderful teacher in college, she inspired others to trust their intuition and to value curiosity, critical thinking, and creativeness. Jessie, I have you to thank for making a career opportunity known to me in Victoria, which led me to working with you at the Juan de Fuca Hospitals from 1985 to 95. These were the golden years of my career, thanks to Jessie, where we worked together to improve the lives and health of the residents living in the long-term care homes. To quote from one of her long-term, long-time nursing friends, Irma Jean, Jessie devoted much of her career to making care and quality of life better for those in their seniors' years. This was her passion, which she sh shared with many, truly shining a light on and bringing to the forefront the importance of quality personal care through elder care in health care and for humanity. Thank you, Jessie, for your longtime friendship, 
your inspirations and support. I will truly miss you. Thank you, Jeanette. Do we have a connection? We might. <laughs> Nothing like building up the anticipation. I'm sorry? I'm not hearing you. Oh, yes, yes. I, I wouldn't like to invite Arthur Roy, a childhood friend of Jesse's, to uh, share some of the stories about um, their, their growing up together. Um, Arthur had a younger sister that was actually the same age as uh, Jesse, uh, but um, uh, Arthur himself was also a, a friend of Jesse's when they were growing up. So, so I'm hoping that he can speak to us now um, to ride the bus down here to Victoria to talk for six or seven minutes. I, I thought was just too much. And when I discovered that he already did book classes online, I thought, well, maybe we could make it work. So maybe Arthur can hear us now. Arthur? Okay. All right. Um, okay. Um, maybe Belinda should come forward now and, and talk to us about um, Jesse as, as teacher, colleague, and friend. This is kind of dangerous. I always have this urge to sing, and uh, that would clear the room in a hurry. <laughs> so I am actually part three of this um, uh, eulogy, and uh, Jesse assigned me the topic of uh, student, colleague, friend, and I've extended that to include family. But I think what she really wanted me to do was to talk about the power of relationships in her life. Relationships develop over time. I have known Jesse for 35 years. And like some of you, we met at the University of Victoria when I was a nursing student, looking for a fast track to something else. Like so many of you, we were colleagues at Juan de Fuca hospitals who became friends. And then as friends, we traveled together, we laughed together, we argued together. Sometimes she really frustrated me, and I am sure I frustrated her. She was enchanting, she was charming, and she could be funny. And for me, many times she was a rainbow after a rainy day. But she also had a serious side. She had little tolerance for injustice for hatred, or for people who were mean to others. She'd call you on, her on your behavior, and I had a scolding from her a time or two in those 35 years. But I can tell you, through all the good times and the frustrating times, I knew she loved me. I never doubted it for a minute. And I loved her. We grew into a family. Jesse, 
my husband Brent, son Sean, daughter Jennifer, and now grandchildren, Zachary, Connor, Morgan, and Beckett. So how does it happen? How does a student become a colleague? How does that bloom into friendship that evolves into family? The only thing I can think to explain it is the magic of Jesse. You have all experienced the magic of Jesse. Your presence here is a testament to the legacy because she left an impression on your lives as she did mine. Her magic was illuminated through her mentoring, her ability to influence, the wisdom, generosity, kindness, compassion she offered to everyone. She had a sincere belief in the potential of all people. Although Jessie could be described as ambitious and focused and driven in her work, she never ever lost sight of her commitment to students, colleagues, friends, and family. Anne-Marie Monahan, also a student colleague and friend, explained the magic of Jessie this way. I first met Jessie in 1982 when I became a BSN student at Victoria University. At that point, I was in my mid-30s and university, university scared me to death as I had never seen myself as university potential. Jessie was my prof in the first year. She was immediately engaging, smart and encouraging. She understood how we might feel, and she made our nursing courses live in our practice, which was not an easy task. I want you all to know that everyone who met Jessie in this way remembers her fondly. Not only was she my teacher, my mentor, my career guide, but through time she became my dear and close friend. We always had fun together, and I miss her. Anne-Marie ends with, What you might not know about Jessie is that she could be troubled by things in life, but her humor always sat underneath and it was usually accessible. That was her strength. Jessie had an extraordinary ability to nurture friendships into family. Family wasn't just biological to Jessie. It was about deepening a personal connection, an intimacy that grows between people by getting deliberately and intentionally committed to love for that person. Eva Shipaway from the UK says, Jessie was my godmother and Nana Jessie to my children. Jessie, my mother, they were cousins, first cousins. They met for the first time in the 1950s when they were both in their early 20s. They continued to correspond over the years, and when my mother sadly passed away in 1994, I continued to write to Jesse, and in 1997, we met for the first time. She came into my life when I was pregnant with my first child, Emily. A time when a woman needs her mother. Jesse will always be my fairy godmother for coming into my life and being there when my mother could not. Jesse has shaped me as a person and my family in ways I can never have imagined. Whilst I feel such sadness at her passing, I also feel a great sense of joy and gratitude for the times that we shared during her visits to England and ours to Canada. 
Jessie's love and guidance has helped me grow as a person. She identified qualities in me that I had never recognized in myself, and I am a better person for having had Jessie in my life. Her love of life was infectious. She was great, fun, interesting, and wonderful company. Every moment with Jessie was special, like sitting watching the sea at Cattle Point while sipping coffee and eating a muffin we bought at McDonald's. We talked about her parents, her life, and we shared views of all sorts of topics. Attending church service with, with Jessie was especially meaningful. Jessie's faith was important to her, and to share these moments was a privilege poignant and powerful. Eva ends her letter to us with this. Jesse had a life of purpose with compassion and remarkable capacity to help and care for others. She has made an immense difference to so many lives. Yes, Eva. Jesse helped all of us see the power of love and belonging and all of us are better because of her. You know she was committed to her friendships with all of you. She wanted to make a difference in the lives of those she loved and cared about, and she did. Your memories of her say so. She wanted to make a difference in the community she lived in, and this le legacy is felt by so many that benefit from the personal effort she gave to the charities she supported. She would have a message for us today, and if she could write a letter, it would be a letter of hope. And I think that hope is expressed in the Ojibwe meditation by Richard Wagness, and I will close with it. Missing someone is feeling a piece of your heart gone astray. Sure, it keeps beating, and sure, you keep breathing, but there's a gap in the rhythm of it, in the rhythm of the everyday things around you. You seem to move a little less gracefully, but you still move, and that's the critical thing. Because missing someone doesn't mean things grind to a halt. Instead, it means you move out of gratitude for the gift of, of their presence in your life. You move to keep experiencing and to keep confronting life head on so that your return allows you to reunite with them, more human, more alive, and more real. God bless Jesse. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. Thank you, Jeanette. And unless, do we have a connection with? Okay, we don't. Well, that's all right. We tried. That's all we can do. <laughs> um, I too will um, remember Jesse fondly. I, I liked being with her. Um, she uh, was always full of energy, action, great ideas, and also important questions. And so I, I had honored her for that. She would ask the hard questions. Um, there's an expression today, um, a person's vibe. I think Jessie had a very positive vibe about her, <laughs> and we could all uh, respond to that. Uh, she certainly knew how to have a good time. Uh, she's actually the one that introduced me to the CBC's Murdoch Mysteries. <laughs> With her sharp mind, she was never above the hands-on work here at St. John's. She made casseroles for the come in out of the rain shelter for youth, which uh, St. John's hosted uh, one or two nights a week. Um, Jesse, along with Sarah Chu, actually was instrumental in establishing that ministry. Jesse also worked hard to establish a parish nurse position on staff here at St. John's when the uh, congregation was larger. She was well aware of the intertwining of physical, spiritual, 
and emotional well-being. I had the pleasure of working closely with Jessie when she served as a Eucharistic minister here for the Sunday AM service, and when she uh, played the piano for worship services that I did at various um, care facilities around town. I didn't know until last week that she also played the piano in the, uh, I think the nursery is still there. Anyway, there was a piano there and she would charm the children with her, with her playing. Today we give thanks for the life of a woman who was intentional about her spiritual journey, about her quest for purpose and meaning, about her relationship with God. Jessie, as I've said, never did settle for easy answers when it came to the big questions. Active as long as she could be, Jessie was a doer in basic orientation, a woman of concrete action. Yes, I, I know she was a meditator. She was a valued um, a member of the Contemplative Society here in Victoria. She also went on quiet days, instructed by Cynthia Bourgeau. Um, she stuffied, studied um, Muslim Sufism. But I think um, those times of quiet and stillness were to energize her, energize her all the more to be truly present to others. It was hard for Jessie in her last weeks when she could no longer be a doer. Doing was how she had always felt closest to God, knew she was participating in that eternal life that Christians talk so much about. But she had to surrender, as we all must do in our time. Surrender to our Creator, the divine, the life force of the universe, eternal love, whatever name for God is helpful to you. In surrendering, we can become all the more aware of how much we are loved and how we are a part of God's eternal reality of love. Let us each hold in our hearts gifts that Jesse gave to us as we now sing the next hymn she chose for us, Amazing Grace. Will you all stand?
you are able, I invite you to remain standing for the Statement of Faith. Uh, this is a part of uh, the 8 o'clock service every Sunday morning here at St. John's, and Jessie would have repeated this every time she attended that service. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. You may be seated. And now Marnie will lead us in prayers that she's pulled together for us all. As we conclude our tribute to Jesse, I ask you now to join me in this short prayer. God of grace and glory, we thank you for Jesse, whose unique and bountiful life enriched so many, and who has now been taken from us. We thank you for the friendship she gave, the peace, joy, and delight that she brought. We thank you for Jesse's love offered and received while she was here with us on earth for all the connections that she created among so many of us, for the mentoring and the support so freely given. We pray that nothing in Jess's life will be lost and that the knowledge and wisdom she developed and shared will continue to be a benefit in our world. We pray that all that was important to Jess will be respected by those who follow and that the many areas in which she shone will continue to mean much more to us now that she is gone. We pray for ourselves who are severely tested by Jess's passing that we do not attempt to minimize her loss or seek refuge from it in words alone, nor that we brood over it so that it overwhelms us and isolates us from others. Grant to all of us who mourn Jesse's passing a sure confidence in thy gracious care that casting our grief on thee, we may know courage, courage in the new life of Christ. And we ask this in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. Remain seated as we continue in prayer. We say together, as it's printed in the leaflet, Eternal Spirit, Earthmaker, Painbearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. 
with the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. We continue together with a very ancient prayer, actually coming from the Eastern Orthodox Church ori originally, but used quite, quite frequently here in North America. And we read this together too. And when we get to the Alleluia's, we say them with joy. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Jesse with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Jesse with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. If you are able, I invite you to stand as I complete the commendation prayer over Jesse's cremated remains. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jesse. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace, both now and evermore. Amen. Now we sing together the final hymn, Lord of the Dance. <laughs> 